It's a major break in a desperate months-long search for a missing daughter, sparking renewed intensity for the investigation into a second disappearance. Now two families in a painful search for answers from the one man with a disturbing history linked to both cases. Could he provide critical clues? When I found out, I showed no emotion. I was just shocked. A heartbreaking mystery, partially solved, but raising painful new questions in the disappearance of a Missouri woman. The last two weeks, I've had a really bad heaviness in my heart. The body of 21-year-old Jessica Runyons, who vanished seven months ago, discovered just this week outside Kansas City. Last night, for me, was the hardest thing I've ever done. It was hard for me to tell Megan that her best friend and sister is gone. Jessica's mother, Jamie, seeking solace with another grieving family, the Beckfords. Rhonda and Jim's daughter went missing nearly 10 years ago. Two families linked together in tragedy, both missing daughters who disappeared just miles apart, both connected to one man, Kyler Eust. We've been through this before, and it's a roller coaster ride of emotions and kind of as a self preservation mechanism. That ring? The police telling them a second skull in the same location had been discovered. I'm not going to say 100% because my gut's telling me I have some resolution, so. The other set of remains? A potential bombshell breakthrough in the 10-year-old disappearance of Kara Kapetsky. But police saying it could take up to a year to get a positive identification. Both bodies found just miles away from the Kapetsky home. In my heart of hearts, I believe it's Kara because everybody always said that when he took Jessica that they felt that when they found one, they would find both. Kyler Eust, Kopetsky's ex-boyfriend and allegedly the last person Jessica Runyons was seen with, denied any involvement with her disappearance to 41 Action News. Did you kill Jessica? Did you? The 28-year-old has never been charged in connection to Jessica's disappearance. Authorities now investigating a homicide. The family's hopeful new clues might finally link back to Kyler Eust, a man with a troubled past. Our fight begins now. We're not done. Jessica Runyon's was known for her easy laugh and playful spirit. We like to drive around and blare music. The oldest of three girls, she was a role model, her family says, to 14-year-old Megan and 6-year-old Michaela. I love you, Jessica. That's my last one of the four of us. It shows our closeness. Mm -hmm. We first spoke with Jamie in January. She led us into their lives for her first extensive TV interview since her daughter went missing. I can talk about anything and everything about her, but it's just the sentimental stuff like future, past, yeah, sorry. Jessica's grandfather driving us on the route he believes she took that last night, at the time still searching for clues. Jamie's pretty strong, but eventually there's a time when Jamie is its going to hit her and hit her hard. Thursday, September 8th, Jessica is at a party with friends. Six to seven people there. They were just sitting around drinking beer, watching TV, just goofing off. She reportedly leaves with Kyler Eust, a longtime friend of her boyfriend. Kyler, a man with an alleged history of violence towards women. He'd just gotten out of prison on a drug charge. She offered to give him a ride, or did he ask for one? They came together, from what we were told. When did you first get that sinking feeling that something was terribly wrong? Um, when she didn't show up at her doctor's appointment in the afternoon. Hours later, police find Jessica's black Chevy Equinox, its interior destroyed by fire in an isolated wooded area just off the road. There is no sign of Jessica inside. That was my worst fear, that she was burnt in the car. Early the next morning, Kyler Eust is arrested, accused of setting Jessica's car on fire, charged with knowingly burning a vehicle. He's pleaded not guilty. Molly Hastings is Kyler Eust's lawyer. So Jessica Runyon's mother is essentially begging him to speak out, but you've advised him not to. This is not advice to further punish or penalize Jessica's family. Kyler has not been charged with anything outside of knowingly burning this car, and that is, again, a charge we pled not guilty to and that we intend to fight. Kyler Eust is still in jail waiting trial on charges relating to the burning of Jessica's SUV.
In a statement to ABC News on the discovery of Jessica's remains, Hastings saying, despite developments made over the course of the past week, Mr. Eust remains charged with only one count of knowingly burning a vehicle. She continues, there are too many unknown factors to comment further, but I can assert that Kyler has not been charged with any further crimes. But were there disturbing signs in his past? The court documents show almost an escalation of violence against the women in his life. Anytime you have domestic violence in a relationship, there's generally an escalation. In 2011, an ex-girlfriend sought an order of protection against him, alleging that Eust choked me and slapped me and punched me, saying that he threatened to kill me and my family and my baby. But it's what happened to Kyler's other ex-girlfriend almost 10 years ago that's the most alarming. Cara was 17 when she went missing. Cara loved her friends, loved uh, being around people. She always had a, she had a smile. Her parents say they noticed a personality change after she started dating Kyler. His idea was to separate her from us so he could have the control and manipulation over her. Later, her family says they started noticing bruises and that she told them stories indicating physical and emotional abuse. She said he grabbed me by the throat, slammed me up into the corner of the door and said, what are you going to do now, b and she said, Dad, I thought he was going to kill me. Kara filed for an order of protection against Kyler, citing he had a knife in hand and said, I'm going to slit your throat. He has never been charged with any crime related to her disappearance. I have every expectation that had there been enough evidence against Kyler to have charged him in that young woman's disappearance that they most certainly would have, and they haven't and it's been 10 years. And yet 10 years later, he is still a person of interest in that case. I think Kyler will be a person of interest forever based on the fact that public opinion has already made up its mind. But for the grieving families, still a long way away from a resolution. You just can't imagine it. I mean, until you've experienced it and, and uh, had to deal with it, it's, it's, it's really hard to explain. The waiting is the hardest part. I was happy for Jamie when she got the confirmation that it was Jessica. And to hear that awful word that it might be a year, I mean, that was just, that was hard to take. Two mothers not leaving each other's side, vowing to fight until justice is served. We're gonna make sure that their voice is heard loud and clear. And we're here to get justice for them. Our thoughts are with both families tonight, and of course, we'll continue to follow developments in the story.